everybody. Welcome back to another episode of the Dow and Develop podcast. I'm your host, Eugene Creepy MC, and today is Calcasus and Georgian episodes because I am having Grigol Samharaze. He is from my lovely country, Georgia. He's the founder and CEO of Sunbrella LLC and also the founder and CEO of Arena Master is the blockchain game which is being developed by Sunbrella's team. And it is a skill based matchmaking game combining play to win and play to earn modus, of course, to utilize NFT. So it's going to be very interesting episode regarding blockchain gaming and utilizing NFT in gaming. So, Grigol, welcome to our podcast and Kamar Joba. Kamar Joba, hello, and thank you for having me here. It's a really great opportunity. So, yeah, let's rock. Let's let's go forward. Let's rock. For those of us, for those of you guys who don't know what is Georgia, Georgia is not uh, the state in the United States. This is the very old country. It's like a Singapore, but on the Black Sea in Caucasus region. It's a very old country with recorded history. It started from ancient Greeks more than uh, three thousands of years. And the first vine ever made and ever found it, the oldest wine, was found at, uh, with a uh, 8,000 years history. The first wine was made on the Georgian, uh, modern Georgian territory, if I'm not mistaken. So uh, this is, the Georgia has legendary hospitality. You should come to Georgia to feel, because Georgians say that a guest comes from God and Georgians relations to any guest from any country is like you are the, 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 the God center, not, not less. Uh, so, yeah, that's like a tradition for us. Yeah. Yes. Amazing foods, amazing wine, homemade wine. It's very, uh, there's an uh, Orthodox Christian country. The Christianity had been established in the fifth century of the modern era by famous uh, Nino in Georgia. This is like a symbol. Uh, in Georgia, uh, ladies, ladies and women are, they, that is a cult, a uh, cultly deda. Uh, Georgians respect women a lot. So if you're a lady, let's come to Georgia and feel like that. So I, I may say a lot of good things about Georgia. You should come there. And it, it is a very crypto friendly country with easy regulation, with very easy regulation. I when I when I, I'm saying that Singapore on the Black Sea, I am no joking. It likes that. And Georgia has, for my opinion, has a very good chance to become a crypto hub on the Black Sea in upcoming 10 years. We'll talk about that later. So, Grigal, let's start with your story in the blockchain space. You are a very experienced man, you are a tech geek. And the blockchain. What is your story? How did you get first in the blockchain and um, your story for now? Yeah, so as I remember, it was like uh, 2014, if I'm correct. So I've been like, you know, in the crypto space, just looking at the Bitcoin and stuff. And I was using kind of different exchanges. Uh, at that time, the Binance was not really top one on the market. Like it was, but not as popular as now it is. So I was using kind of different exchanges because of the different kind of projects. Um, and I have been investing in a different kind of uh, uh, crypto projects like that. I, I lost a lot because I have been using like different exchanges and especially like uh, like with the hot wallets. So some, some of them just disappeared, some of them having some issues right now and, and stuff but still like i was also investing in like nft related project when it just came out in like 2017 with uh with a to one one of the the biggest name like crypto kitties like it was not really i was always thinking like okay you can call it a game but it's not actual game it's just uh the, the 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 way you can breed the nfts around and play around just not not as the game but and and in the in the gaming space i came also very, from very early stages, um, I, have, I have been playing like a lot of games, including like World of Warcraft, uh, the Dota type games and so on. Um, and with, uh, yeah, in, in the crypto space nowadays, I'm also in a crypto with our round project now. It's our first project that we plan to create. And we have been like, I, uh, to be honest, like I have learned uh, in last year, way more than I learned in like previous maybe five years. Because when you're very into the, the crypto, then you learn a lot. And when you do some practice and especially having some additional networking, that helps a lot because I have met a lot of interesting people, like including you and a lot of like uh, people around the world who are actually always advising, suggesting, like giving, giving some sort of feedback. And that's how we actually move into the next level. 
It's a grand story. I really love it. Super cool. What are you most passionate about in Web3? Because you know, you learn a lot. What excites you most in the Web3 space? Yeah, so uh, like I love the Web3 just because the Web3, like Web Web 2.0 actually broke a lot of people's heart. Uh, in, in terms of like, if you have been, been playing some, some sort of games and you have like lost maybe, I don't know, uh, two weeks or three weeks, uh, and and there is something happened, just server maybe crashed or files deleted or the owner of the game decided to shut it down or something, then you actually lose everything, right? And this is really hard, like hurting a lot of gamers in the industry and also like people even stop playing games in general because it, it's not common to, to happen like you work for something and the, then you lose everything and you're not guaranteed at any point. But like with uh, with uh, in in terms of like Web three, what we have here is that if we talk about the NFTs itself, at least you hold the NFT and this is your digital asset, which which gives you the guarantee that you're gonna be owner of that uh, the NFT. And even if game, for example, is crashing or not working anymore, you still have the digital asset that you can uh probably sell it out later or even even hold for more time and wait for some fixes or whatever so there is no leak on the data breaks or there there is not something the 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 huge risky point that you lose your digital assets even if we say about the access infinity hack so people are still holding the nfts and they are still eco ecosystem right now right but but in terms of like other like i don't know the centralized and web through uh, games there, there is still like more risky to something to happen and you lose literally everything. And even if you don't lose, it, it actually like the value of your items is almost a zero because mostly like in the games, you cannot sell the account or you cannot sell the item itself or whatever you earned from the game. And uh, like some people are selling from for like, you know, by, by like whispering to other people, okay, I have an account and I can sell it to you privately. And that, that, that's, that, that's really annoying because like only the owners of the games are making the money. But we have seen that a lot of great ecosystems out there even eventually coming in like from 2020 that we realized that, okay, we can create Web3 games and, and it can be really, really cool for a whole ecosystem. How did you come up with the idea of Arena Master? What is Arena Master and how is it different if compared with other blockchain games? Uh, yeah, that's a great question. So it's, it's an idea uh, in terms of the gameplay, we came with idea with our community because at the beginning we had a different kind of idea of the game itself, but the name was the same because we wanted uh, the, the warriors to fight each other. That was the main goal of the name. So we call it Arena Master. And uh, then based on the feedback of community members that we have, uh, we decided to create kind of similar to the Candy Crush style game, where you still have the warriors as the NFTs and you can still use them inside a gameplay. And, and it's very similar to the Candy Crush. And the reason we decided so is that we know that we have like more than 100 million people loving the game, not just the playing, but loving that game itself, then the mechanics itself. And the uniqueness we have, if we come up with uh, that point, the uniqueness first we have, it's the, the multiplayer, the game is multiplayer itself. It's a turn based, so it's a different with a, the Candy Crush uh, because you can like uh, fight with the opponent or with your friends or anybody else from the, from the world. And that makes it more and more interesting. Uh, and plus, like in terms of the, the crypto space, if you compare with other like crypto related projects or, or the games, the, our ecosystem is like, like this little bit different. So we are not like targeting to be always hyped. So that's all, not only how we actually reserve the, the, the price to, to be same or increased. What we do is that uh, in the play to earn mode, we don't actually mint new tokens or just distribute our own tokens to the to the um, to the players. Uh, we actually take some commissions from the PvP matches and from the tournaments, which is distributed to the rewards pool. And then from the rewards pool, the players from the play to earn are getting the, the tokens. So which means that it just goes to the, the same circle. And even if we have, let's say, 10,000 players, 
loving the game and enjoying the uh, enjoying the game, the ecosystem will not crash even if it doesn't have any more hype. Just, I'm just saying as example, but of course we're gonna be trying to have more hype all, always. But but we try we actually made the ecosystem in a way that we are avoiding the pon another Ponzi scheme out there, and we know a lot of Ponzi schemes going even in the play to or, or earn or play to move or different kind of modes. So that, that's the, one of the uniqueness we have. And of course, there are other uh, futures. Maybe I can cover uh, in other questions, I hope. Well, where is Arena on its roadmap for now? And what are the plans for 2022? Uh, yeah, uh, for Arena, we already have completed the seed round. We have completed the, the lot of things like white paper, website, uh, the trailer of the game. And also we completed the, the prototype of the game like two days ago. And it's already launched on the, the, the Play Store and it's under review on the App Store. And people are going to be able to play the game and try it out. Uh, and we are in a private sale right now and we're planning to... Uh, do the multiple launch pads. We already have confirmed some launch pads, and we will do the public sell in about like uh, uh, we target in like next month. We we are flexible on time because we feel how market is and and we are waiting some some situations to be happening in a in a in a little bit better way. So then we can launch the do the public sell for the next month. Who are, are the arena core team members who are been developing this game? Um, so our core, we are like uh, about the six as a core team members that includes also advisors from the different kind of countries. Uh, also the, the local partners that we, we, we are partnering with like uh, local people who actually started the project. Uh, and uh, one of our um, like CEO is also involved in a crypto space for more than like seven years. Uh, he have a huge mining center in also Georgia. And he have been doing the different kind of projects, uh, um, like uh, and, and he's own, owning the a lot of uh, companies as well, uh, and he's really good in the business development itself. Um, and also, like one of our advisor we have on board that is coming from uh, the game exchange, uh, which is the ready platform now. It's for the game developments, the ready to use. The, it's a uh, the AP you know, like it's a SDK that people can use and it, like easily uh, in integrate uh, the tokenomics to, to the game and create like a crypto ecosystem inside even hyper casual games. So we have on board of that. And we have also other people with a different kind of experience coming uh, from like different kind of directions. And we are still open and we still have spots to onboard some other advisors in our team. Uh, with some kind of different directions. For example, we have a spot for the NFTs. So we want to get on board some other additional team members who actually have experience in the NFT sale, um, the ideas behind the NFTs. Of course, we have our own, which also I'm, I'm going to be covering in some next questions. And uh, yeah, that, that's it. Well, so guys, if, if, you, if you feel yourself uh, fitting to these points uh yeah Nicole has already mentioned to feel free to connect them at the end of the podcast we will say how to what's the best way to to follow him or to reach him what of interesting fact you want to say something oh uh, yeah so i forgot that we also have like our in-house uh, developers who are actually working from the 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 company uh that working from the design or video um, creation or anything else so whatever you can see on our project it includes like everything it's created by us by our team so we only have some um, outsourced people in the community building and, and and stuff like that the rest team who actually works on the product building and service service building it's our in-house developers well uh for what you're saying uh is your core team are they based in uh what city of Georgia in Tbilisi and exactly yeah. where in Tech Park? Uh, in yeah, in Georgia, where? in Tbilisi. Yeah, in Georgia, in Tbilisi. Not in Tech Park. We have our own office in, in Tbilisi. Amazing, amazing. Guys, you should visit Georgia. Please mention that. And we'll, we should meet there too. So, one of interesting fact in March of 2002, Arena Master uh, had been uh, showcased on a WOW Summit in Dubai. Yeah, there are race. And this event is organized by my close friends, 
Uh, Guy in Polsky, greetings for you. Maria Vavchok from Ukraine, greetings for you. And they also love Georgia. Uh, I wonder, how was it for, uh, for Success Arena? Was it, was it successful, uh, this showcasing on this event for you? Uh, it was brilliant because, like, first of all, just to start from the scratch, I got a lot of, like, networks. And people there are just amazing, uh, having a lot of, like, different kind of experience. And we also got really good partners. By the way, for Arena Master Project, we actually had our own stand there. And uh, we got so many like beautiful things from that event. First, like networking, second, other like sort of connections with uh, other partners that we actually partnered after the event. And also the current project that was actually there with a the stand. We also partnered like with a lot of projects there. So it actually gave us uh, another push to, to, to move forward. That's an amazing testimonial. Uh, I will make uh, this your testimonial. Uh, my, my guys will see that and will be greetings for you. So uh, let's emphasize again how NFTs are specifically utilized in Arena Master, non fungible tokens. Yeah, that's a great question. So, uh, like, we have two types of NFTs. So, first is the characters that can be used inside a game uh, and can be used inside a play to earn mode. And also, like, like to, to play, uh, so let's start at the beginning, like we have uh, different kind of modes. First is like play to win, where you actually play the game with your opponent with a token. So you bet the token, your opponent does the same. And if you're announced as the winner, you get uh, the tokens from the pool. And we also do have uh, play to, like free to play mode, where you can actually play the game for free, just to check it out. And then uh, just to, uh, like get some experience how you can play the game and so on. And you might get rewarded as well in AMT token with a small portion, of course, which can be used same for a, like play to win mode. Um, and we also do have tournaments where you are also joining with a token. So required to ask the entry is only the token. But in, in terms of like, if you're still having the NFT, you can still use the NFT inside a game because it actually stands for the booster inside a game. And you can actually use the NFT to def like to defeat the opponents to, to, to have the more chance to win with your opponents or, or in the like in, in tournament. And also in a play to earn, it's required to have NFT. It's not required to hold the token to to play to to play play to earn mode and if you're holding like better nft than like for example if you're holding legendary you have more chance to complete all tasks the like daily tasks that we have while you play with the environment so there is like five level and in each level you fight with a different kind of boss like the kind of big character and you have to like complete these tasks daily tasks to to get like a uh, to get additional reward in, in an AMT token. So that's how NFTs are used. And also we have a breeding function of NFTs that you can actually breed to NFT to each other. And um, of course, like it's uh, having some limitations. So you cannot breed every time or something. So there is some sort of limitation based on what kind of rarity of NFT you have. So that's another key, like key, how you can use the NFTs for the ecosystem to, for example, minting new NFTs for the, the marketplace for newcomers who actually willing to purchase NFT to play the play to earn mode. But but still some, some NFTs are limited. So the main collection will be limited and it's not gonna be burned. So if you mint the new NFT, the, the main collection will still exist because we want to like keep the floor price up for the main collection. So that's the mainly like use case for the NFTs. But rather than that, we also have like NFT yield farming and um, yeah, NFT yield farming where you can actually stake the NFT and get some uh, tokens. Amazing words. Now, uh, that many, I would love to ask you a kind of professional question from our team because in Velop is a DAO, uh, I would say NFT related DAO is developing sort of wrapping protocol for NFT. I don't know if you are familiar with the concept of wrapped NFT, but it sounds quite easy. I'll explain in a minute. So it allows to take an NFT, add any fungible tokens to it, add some useful features uh, such as time or event local royalties or rental mechanics and wrap it up and getting uh, technically the same NFT with the same metadata with another features with crypto inside. So wrapped NFT acts as a container with NFT and crypto assets inside with predictable price first, 
And finally, it leads to a lot of use cases, especially in play to earn gaming. Uh, one of the cases are, are especially in play to earn, we would start with. So, for example, uh, ranting, lending, borrowing NFT in a game, and so on and so forth. So, what are your general thoughts on that as a technical person? Could it be useful for Arena, for instance? Yeah, that's definitely very useful and very interesting uh, part. Uh, and of course, like it's uh, mm, uh, as, as the utility side, if you're holding NFT and especially it's wrapped and you can wrap the NFT or update the metadata of the NFT or whatever, that, that's very interesting part because there is the, at another hand for the, for example, game developers who are actually trying to have some utilities inside a game is uh, uh, having like more futures and can actually came up with other like cool experience with a uh, NFT holder itself because uh, you you actually have the lot of direction in terms of like if you are wrapping the NFT and uh, like in, in terms of like Arena Master right now what we plan to do is the, the the renting function so like kind of scholarship program so if you're holding the NFT and you like don't really want to play the game you can rent it out and and someone can actually play the game for free and uh, with, with your NFT under your NFT and, and you will get commission from each distribution that's going to happen in, inside the play to earn mode. So that, that's what we plan to do. But like in general, for like as Rob NFTs, that, that's uh, the beautiful things and it opens a lot of direction for the game developers to, to work on. Thanks, it works. You know, one of the use cases of wrapped NFT, we personally in particular started our personal history of envelope. Uh, was a token sale when tokens of a crypto startup uh, were packed into wrapped NFT and were sold to investor with defined unlock dates according to vesting terms. So this uh, in particular protects startups from token dumping and allows VCs to, uh, with immediate on hand liquidity if they choose to sell the profit before the unlocking days. In particular, our main backer, Animoca Brands, invested. Uh, they insisted to sell them our tokens in the form of rep nft so use your tool first for your for your personal investment they say so uh, we are very proud of this case what are your thoughts on that would it be useful for any crypto startups yeah i think that's very very useful and uh first of all i think it was like eye catchy that the thing they have done especially like talking with the vcs that there is another way that you can invest instead of i'm gonna like vest your token or or click your token or something i'm doing something special now I'm offering that to you. That that got like huge interest, and yeah, that that's a beautiful. And I think uh, um, the like in, every month at least, or even we can say every two weeks, we get something new through the blockchain because a lot of developers are working on the different kind of things, and there is some other type of like uh, futures came up here time to time. And top of that future, we can build a lot of things around. Like if you got an idea to do so then I, I might get the better idea time to time, like after two weeks or three weeks. So that's definitely something we have to like uh, focus on and then work to, to develop more like different and special ideas on top of that. How would you suggest to learn about Web3, especially for new guys, newbies? Well, I think uh, the best source of learning anything nowadays is like a YouTube and also like different kind of channel, like uh, um, platforms where you can actually purchase the, the, the packages of the, the kind of uh, different videos or, or lessons itself uh, from the different kind of uh, experts in, in the space. So what you can do is that to, to learn from free, the YouTube is a place and, and also like uh, different kind of forums. It's very important also to join in the different kind of projects, even like NFT or it can be like, I don't know, something to, to get understand, to talk with the people, to ask the questions, even like with the team members to, to realize like what they are building. And also at the, the same time, you're going to be learning what kind of possibilities exist there. And of course, anytime you can search the, the things on the YouTube and there are a lot of like uh, useful channels where people can actually learn the new things and even like to just get a whole idea about the crypto or any like specific topics. And also like a platform, as we mentioned, if, if they have budget to, to, to purchase some, some videos, that's also one of the, the amazing 
way to actually learn more. And, and the communication is guaranteed. So you need to communicate with people. You need to communicate with a, maybe project owners to talk with them, to realize what they do and to get more like understanding of the, the crypto space and, and the project. And you can say that if you are uh, perhaps, uh, say, a Web2 game player, why not to start to play a blockchain game? This is easy. Just have a new experience. Is that the good way to be on board in the Web3? Uh, yeah, so uh, that's that's also one of the way one of the reason why we decided to have the free to play mode because like we have seen in the you know like Web three games we have seen that there was like okay like play to earn but it was required to hold an NFT or the token or whatever to start playing the game because the games were not you know as attractive as possible people were really playing the games just for the earning and that uh, we know that the play to earn having a lot of issues to just because of that people are just playing to to make money and that's it right but nowadays it's a coming in a different way that you can enjoy playing the game itself because it can be semi-decentralized and it can offer like different kind of things animations or whatever like different kind of mechanics as well so definitely like web2 gamers can actually even try our game for example to have like some experience and then then easily like even it's, it's more easier than the game they are playing to, because I have seen the games that it actually requires high IQ, first of all. And the secondly, like it requires like tons of time. I, I, I think like more than two years to be like good uh, gamer in that kind of whatever game it is. Like it is Dota or Lineage or World of Warcraft or whatever it is. So it takes at least two years. But like in, in switching from Web 2 to Web 3 takes like a few minutes. If you just, you know, do some sort of, quickly research how to create, for example, MetaMask wallet. And that's it. So you just create the wallet, you sign in the game, and then you start building your ecosystem there. So, yeah. So gaming is a great way to learn. You know, I have been promoting Georgia as a place for crypto, the crypto friendly country, since I first visited Georgia in June 2018 on the crypto event of Blockchain and Bitcoin Conference in Georgia and Redison Hotel. Then I met my first Georgia in France. So since the day, uh, we've been doing a lot. We made events. Uh, we created a community. And but time time changed. We had a COVID era, and the last time I uh, celebrated Georgia, I met New Year to 2020 in Crypto Cafe mm -hmm. in Pelissi. And I would love to ask you, what is the current of your perception? Because you are an insider. You're Georgian. You've been running a crypto startup inside Georgia. And why Georgia? Tell you your opinion. Why Georgia is is the good place uh, for to run a blockchain related business, or maybe to relocate a team or a crypto even a crypto project to there? Yeah, great question. So, by the way, our office is very close to the crypto coffee. So, um, uh, so the best place that I, I believe the Georgia is for the crypto space is first the regulations are very smooth and very like flexible. The second like electricity, it actually started with the mining because as you might know, the Georgia itself was top three in a mining in world. So it was like after China, I guess. So it was something that people won't believe because the country itself is very small and it's, it was unbelievable to have this kind of, this amount of hashing power coming from the Georgia. But, but like th this was actually how the crypto thing started in Georgia. And even like if we talk about the current projects that are on the market, for example, um, Step In got very popular in Georgia. It's, and it's uh, the first country for the, that project that people are having, having like playing the game from. Like uh, the country Georgia is the first. And also we have a lot of tourists coming from, from the like crypto space. And whatever I like, a um, um, lot of tourists are getting interested to have even the mining things going on in Georgia and, and the different kind of stuff. And also in terms of like, uh, for example, hiring the team for the, the building some project or whatever costs very cheap than other countries. If you compare like Europe or if, if you compare to the, um, uh, for example, like USA or uh, other like tier two countries, tier one countries, 
then you might get huge difference in like building team in Georgia for the crypto or building team in um, like Germany or in, I don't know, New York or in London. So do you, so. Do you, do you recommend to uh, look for to or even to hire Georgian IT people for a crypto project? Am I correct? Uh, yes, because it's a uh, cost like um, it's more not, not expensive, it's cheaper. And also Georgian people like no, I'm not comparing to anybody else, but Georgian people are also very smart. How how big is uh, uh, Georgian crypto community uh, for now? What are the main events, meetups? Uh, what are that's a great meeting? question. We do our own meetups started like two months ago. So we do the weekly, like I mean the monthly meetups. The the project like event is called uh, the Gamify, and uh, we actually had uh, more than fifty people uh, in a previous event, and people mostly was from the different country. To be honest. Like also there was some Georgian people, but mostly we have seen that people were coming from the different kind of countries. And also we have seen their white beat members and different kind of huge like project team members that came to the, to the event. And uh, the amount of the request to get invited to the event is dramatically increasing. So we didn't have imagined that uh, if, 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 if it was like that amount of number, people wanted to go to events and, and check the projects and talk to each other. So that, that was amazing. And we got like more than 100, 150 requests through, through that event. And also like, if you plan to, to come, feel free to like, uh, uh, schedule with us some special event through that. And maybe you can also be a speaker of, of the, the event. Sounds amazing. Uh, how do you see, you know, will it be possible for Georgia to become a sort of IT or even blockchain crypto hub or a sort of a Switzerland and Caucasus on the Black Sea in 10 upcoming years? Because uh, Georgia is uh, a rapidly developing country for now. And what should be done for that uh, from Georgian side, from Georgian government and from all the people around the world, uh, for example, like me? Because a lot of people in the world love Georgia sincerely. They, they uh, perceive Georgia as perhaps the future place for working and for living and they want to do something something for their lovely country. What should we do for that? Yeah, that, that's a great question. That's, first of all, something that I want to see myself. So there is, I think, uh, first of all, it's important that people get more and more experience in the crypto space. And that just started. I mean, like, uh, there are some percentage of people that actually know the crypto and are the, in the crypto space for years. But there are a lot of people so it doesn't have any experience in the crypto. But it actually started about like half a year ago or one year ago that people started to like, you know, playing the games or playing the different kind of things in the, in the crypto. And as I mentioned, if I go outside even right now, I'm going to see the people walking like uh, in the running you know, all like a grouped people or whatever. I'm going to see them because they are joined in some sort of like crypto project in a play to move um project and people getting experience by playing those kind of games and that was the great thing that you mentioned that it's easier way to come in the crypto space with the games and, and some some similar things because you get more like uh it's more interesting because if you start with a blockchain uh, which explains like the the chains and blocks and stuff it's not interesting so um so first like a uh, step is that people get more understanding uh, as the the crypto side the second, of course, like it's important for the government itself to, uh, I don't know, maybe uh, build up from their side some kind of hubs or invest in it. Uh, so, so it's not only the way that crypto guy investing in a project or creating some sort of hub, it's very important that they will get some sort of support from the government itself. So that, that could be the thing. Uh, and yeah, the rest is up to always on the people as like, we get more experience in the crypto, we get on the higher stages, then, then definitely like we can become like small crypto um, like country. Even, even we, we are called like that because as I mentioned, like a lot of mining going on in Georgia, even like before it was a huge amount of miners here. So it's very close on the step. It's just a little bit push left. Maybe it can be like two years, three years, something like that. Amazing. And I hope uh, that Aftan Dilkas Raza, the chairman of uh, Gita Tech Park, is 
here and after now, after the old greetings for you. And this is a great testimony about Trudia. And we are here. We are helping Trudia to, to become a crypto hub on the Black Sea. I am truly believing in this idea. So, uh, uh, you know, how do you personally estimate the level of crypto adoption or what's pretty in a crypto among the ordinary, ordinary population in Georgia? I know that there are a lot of Bitcoin ATMs, for example, in Belize. How many Georgians, what person of Georgians have uh, already used crypto, have already familiar with crypto? Yeah, so uh, we have like uh, two things there. The first is that how faster the number that we're going to name increased and uh, the, the how fast it happened is just crazy because as I say, like in half year, if we had like, let's say 5% of people having some information in general about the crypto, now it's up to like 50, 60% and that's crazy, right? So people get interest very like in, in half year, we almost got like more than um, like 40 or like 50 percent of the of the people got interest about the crypto. So I think it's gonna cover all like 100 percent very very soon, just because it's increasing really really like um, simply and and faster. And also like uh, if you have seen some TV shows and, and stuff, they are also talking about the crypto time to time. That's at least what I see. But before we never seen that in a TV show, some people was talking about the crypto. And we also got some influencers about the crypto in Georgia and we haven't before. So now if you want to get some information, you can go ahead and watch in a Georgian language, right? And this really, really helps. So I think it can be about like 40%. 50% about like that. But in a young generation, I could say even 80%. Amazing, amazing. So uh, Gil, finally, uh, what's the best way to follow you on the internet to reach you for business purposes? And what's the best way to follow Arena Master and uh, join Arena community? Yeah, I would love to write the, the link in, in our chat. So well, it's a link three and you can access like our all social networks, our trailer, our game, um, and also like pitch stack and contact information. And if someone wants to like schedule and book the call with us, feel free to do with that link as well. Amazing. I will put all the links in the description below of this video. Please uh, find the link and join the Arena community. And uh, finally, Regal, it's been an amazing episode. Uh, I remembered all my emotions regarding Georgia. And for, for that time, I would love to send a warm, warm greetings to my Georgian friends, Alex Sudaz and Zurab Mahradze, Vano Narimanidze from Horizon, Georgian Levan Salia, Eka Tamara and Georgi Shevashidze from Crypto Tour Georgia, Sulhan Jashi and Zurab Kerdzivadze from Coinmania.ga. And for all my friends and colleagues who belong to Digital Georgia community, which we established in 2019 when we did a digital hot event in Belize and got it more than 130 people from 10 countries seen Terminal, one of, one of the best uh, IT business business place in Belize, who are in Georgia for now and or plan to come here. Of course, to Afton Dilkasraza and Mariam Lashki from Tech Park or Kida. So uh, please remind that Georgia is a multicultural, multi-religious, very tolerant, and itself it's orthodox Christian country. And it's a democratic country with super people with a super, super amazing hospitality. I repeat again, again, you should come to Georgia and visit there and join the crypto community. Thank you very much. Grigol Samharadze, the co-founder and CEO of Sombrello, CNRN Master and Eugene Crypto MC from Down Valley Podcast. Where you thank you for watching and listening. Please like, subscribe, share, join our community and join Arena Master and visit Georgia and join yeah. the free, the free Thank you so much, everyone. And be sure that you subscribe and, and thumbs up. And also like, again, thank you again for having me here. And it was great journey. It was a good talk. And like Jordan say, Madloba for listening to our podcast. See you in the <laughs> next episode. Bye-bye. Blockchain. B-L-O-C-K chain. Digital money, smart contracts, NFT, IDO, decentralization, transparency, so many opportunities, but so many challenges. Some financial manipulators by their actions confuse blockchain solutions and block their development. The idea that the blockchain should bring copyright and royalties protection to the next level is quite old, but the realizations of these ideas are not perfect at all. 
There is another problem of determining the value of a particular cryptocurrency or NFT. These and other problems need to be solved. Fortunately, the blockchain infrastructure is evolving. My name is E, Mr. E, and I represent the Invalo project. Many things have already been invented in the blockchain today. Tokens, smart contracts, platforms for creating your own coins, NFTs, exchanges for buying, selling and exchanging all these blockchain resources. Envelope is another step in the development of crypto technologies. The protocol that works with NFT and cryptocurrencies. The idea is simple but disruptive. Let's assume you have an NFT, Bitcoin and Ethereum. Using the Envelope protocol, you can wrap the original NFT accompanied with several tokens. Technically, you get a similar NFT, but what is the break for you? Once wrapped, the token has a number of additional features that were not available before. The minimal cost appears. It is provided with coins wrapped together with NFT. An asset wrapped with envelope has a number of properties that allow the original author to receive royalties from the resale of that asset. Various rules can be applied to the wrapped token. For example, a lock period for unwrapping. It secures the asset till the determined moment or safeguards it from speculation during the hype period. At the same time, wrapped tokens can be transferred and traded. These are just some of the scenarios for using envelope. NFTs become more popular and the tools provided by envelope expand the opportunities of NFTs utilization. Wide application possibilities are achieved due to the fact that, in addition to the protocol, the project includes a number of subsystems. The protocol provides functions wrapping and unwrapping. Oracle Mechanics provides asset valuation using analytical algorithms. Index provides a summary assessment of several NFT assets with the common criteria. The project has its own token, which connects all elements of the system. Altogether, this is Envelope, a tool in the blockchain world for building modern and secure systems in various fields. Find more info about the project on the website. Envelope. Make your NFT valuable. Just practical. No hype.